My name is Reese, and when I first embarked on this journey of doing a DIY solar panel installation up on my roof, not only did I have no idea how to do it, I had to learn along the way. But one thing I wondered was, what kind of special tools would I need? Did I need a bunch of expensive and sophisticated tools? Like I know about hammers and drills, but some of these other tools I ended up using, I had never even heard of them before. I mean, look at this thing. This thing looks like a torture device. What about the liquid in here? What is this for and how to use this to install solar panels? Did you know you can bend plastic conduit or you can put in eight foot ground rods in just a few minutes? I wanna show you what some of these specialty tools are, what issue or problem they help me solve and how I use them to install a solar panel system that covers 100% of our electricity every year. Now make sure to check the video description below. I'll keep that updated with resources, links to all the tools I have in this video, as well as my beginner's guide to getting solar, which is free to download. So I wanna talk about this guy first, but a caveat, this list of tools is not meant to be exhaustive, and depending on your situation, you might not end up using some of these tools if you decide to install solar. This is called a step drill. It enables you to get just the right size hole through plastic or metal, so that when you make your conduit connections, you're gonna have a nice, snug fit. I used the step drill mainly in two places. The first was up on the roof on a metal pass-through box. I first measure what size hole I need, and then I drill the appropriate number and size holes. You need to watch carefully though as you drill so you don't accidentally create a bigger hole than what you want. By the way, this box keeps water away from the electrical connections and helps give your system a cleaner look since it provides a way for the wires to transition to conduit under the roof. I also use the step drill on the inverters since they're plastic and they don't have those nice metal knockouts. And you can see when I dry fit the conduit and the bracket, I get a nice clean look. I use this tool on all the places where the conduit runs up to plastic. And by the way, stay tuned for the next video coming up where I'll give you the ultimate tour of my system from the panels all the way out to the power grid, including what this little blue light is and what it's for. Now this next tool is definitely one that I had not heard of before. It's called a reamer. Now what is it for? You use it to get rid of any sharp edges on metal, either on conduit or a hole that you had cut. It has these ridges on it so it can work with different size holes. In one example, after I cut this metal conduit, it had metal burrs on the edge. So I used the reamer and it did a fantastic job at making the edge of the metal buttery smooth. And you want the edge of all of these connection points to be smooth so that you have very little chance of a sharp spot cutting through the wires insulation when you're pulling the wires through. Now the next tool is a heat gun. You probably know what a heat gun is, especially if you've watched one of my previous videos where I used this tool to bring a TV that was dead back to life. But did you know you can use heat like this to bend thick plastic conduit? I mean, look how thick this is. Here's the situation I was in. I needed my plastic conduit to hug the wall, but bend at this one spot to go through the hole in the cinder block that I made. So I gave it a try. And because it was my first time, it took some trial and error before I got the hang of it, but I eventually could mold the conduit into the shape that I wanted. And I was pretty happy with the result. You can see on both sides of the cinder block that I needed to bend the conduit and it all worked out. Next we have the liquid. Believe it or not, this is a product made especially for pulling wires. It's called wire pulling lubricant. Definitely not something I ever thought I'd be buying at the hardware store. However, it did do its magic a few times that I really needed it, especially on one section of conduit. I had eight wires plus a ground wire packed into this conduit with a few twists and turns. I didn't want to take any chance of one of those wires getting snagged or insulation maybe getting a tear in it. So I squirted a bunch of the stuff in there and it pulled it through just fine until I realized I made a mistake. I actually forgot a wire and had to do the whole thing all over again, but the lubricant made life a lot easier. I also used it on this long stretch of conduit where I was pulling the very thick wires. Again, it made life a lot easier. I still have a ton of this stuff left, so hit me up if you could use any wire pulling lubricant. Ground rods. My house never came with them, so according to code, I had to put in two eight foot ground rods. Now, because I had never done it before, I had to watch several YouTube videos to try to figure out what to do. Many people were going up on ladders and hammering these things down. It was a lot of work and time and energy. I wasn't sure that I really wanted to do this project until my electrician said to me, why don't you use one of these? Now, this is obviously a plastic hammer drill from my son, but what he meant was use a real hammer drill. And so the key is to put the hammer drill in hammer mode only where it just goes back and forth and to get a special attachment made for ground rods. Again, I have those tools linked below. And so I borrowed these tools and it was able to get the ground rods in without much trouble. And I was really happy it only took a few minutes per ground rod. None of my fears came true, but my brain did feel like a bowl of soup after all of that hammering action was over. 
One of the easiest and coolest things with connecting solar cables together are these connectors. These are called MC4 connectors. And when you click them into place, you get a watertight electrical connection. Now solar panels come with very short cables usually, and it's just enough to connect up to the microinverter, a power optimizer, or the solar panel right next to it. But at some point, you're gonna to need to have longer cables to connect to your junction boxes. You can buy pre-made solar cables with connectors. They may be called an extension cable, or for a more frugal option, you can buy a kit like this and some PV wire and make your own connections. This kit here came with 12 MC4 connectors and the tools that I needed. And it was pretty easy to make my own connectors on the cables. And again, you just click them into place. If you ever do need to disconnect them, you just get your fingers in there, pinch it and pull them apart. And be mindful of the warning here and don't disconnect them while they're under load. Now let's get up on the roof. The only thing holding each solar panel in place are these four fasteners. Otherwise, they could just slide right off or wind gust might rip them off the roof. So this is why it's important to have them securely fastened and why I purchased this torque wrench. According to my local code, solar panels need to be secured to withstand wind speeds up to 90 miles per hour. Many of you have asked in previous videos, what about strong winds? And that's a good question. The mounting equipment I used was made by Iron Ridge and is rated to withstand winds up to 160 miles an hour, which at least where I live in Pennsylvania is not going to be a problem. The highest recorded wind speed in the state was 81 miles per hour. According to the instructions, these fasteners should be tightened to 80 inch pounds. So what you do is you turn the knob on the torque wrench until it reads 80 and you're ready to use it. I did tighten the bolts about 90% of the way with my drill. So the last few turns were with the torque wrench. And when the specified torque is reached, you hear a click and you can physically see the brake action. So I know that I've tightened these solar panels down to the correct specifications so that no matter how windy it gets, I'm not gonna get worried that any solar panels are gonna be flying off the roof or anything like that. They are there securely. This grabber is also something I never thought I would buy when thinking about solar panels. I actually didn't use this to install the panels, but about a year or so after the installation, I noticed a PV wire was dipping down and getting pretty close to the roof surface. Now this can be a problem because if that wire touches the roof surface and there's some wind going on, eventually the insulation could wear out where it was rubbing and expose the metal wire. And you don't want that happening. To hold up my cables, I use these Sunrunner stainless steel clips. They're designed to hold up to two PV wires at a time. So apparently what happened is one of these wires popped off and instead of taking a couple of solar panels off and all the time and energy, and then just to reattach that one cable, I was able to get this grabber and reach far under the solar panels, tug on the other side of the rail to even out the slack on the line. And so far it's not getting close to the roof surface and it's doing great. And this grabber saved me a ton of time. At the beginning of this project, I wondered if I would have to spend a lot of money on expensive and potentially hard to use tools. And in the end though, none of these tools was very expensive. Probably the hammer drill was the most expensive, but I did borrow that one. And overall, my experience of installing solar myself taught me that most people can do this. The main tools I ended up using were things like my drill, my saw, and I basically followed the instructions on the plan set. These other tools that I ended up using were very helpful in the process and I did learn a ton. Remember to click the like button, I appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you down in the comment section. And remember to stay tuned for the next video where I'll be your tour guide and take you on the ultimate tour from the panels out to the grid.